Hello, this is Danny Holt from Desert Hot Springs Classical Concerts. I'm coming to you here from my home studio here in Desert Hot Springs, and I'm going to have a fun chat with my good friend, longtime friend, and fellow uh, local resident, Meg Irwin Brandon, uh, also coming to us from her home here in Desert Hot Springs. Um, so Meg, your concert is going to premiere soon online as part of our online season of concerts. And yours is uh, different from uh, the other concerts because you play five different instruments, uh, giving us a little tour of some of the instruments that you have here in Desert Hot Springs in your home. Right. Um, yeah, it was a, a very wonderful opportunity to have people come into my house by um, these electronic wonders um, because really this is where I like to play for people uh, just in general having house music is is terrific we're all close together gathered in the same spot really focused so it was wonderful to have this opportunity to just kind of take you around my living room and dining room um, I didn't take you into the hall where there are instruments up on their sides and not playing that's but right. yeah, I chose five different instruments. Uh, there was one I did not select, and that was, oops, and I'm going <laughs> to flip around so you can really see it. Um, this is a rare type of instrument. Bach had a couple of these of varying types. This one is an upright oops, uh, harpsichord. And just so people know, because I mean, you have really beautiful high ceilings in your home. That that instrument <laughs> wouldn't fit in most people. I don't think it would fit in my home. <laughs> it's about nine feet tall. Wow. Yeah. And um, it lives next door to this one. And that's one of the harpsichords that you did feature in your concert video. Right. This is a, an instrument that was made for me. I, I used to spend a few months every winter in Argentina and one of the first things I did when I decided to sort of invest in living there was to invest in a harpsichord. Mm. So this one was built in Buenos Aires by Leopoldo Perez Robledo and painted by Karina Kohutek. And she did this wonderful chinoiserie mm. painting um, after the style that was very popular in France in the 18th century. They're just crazy about anything Asian. Hmm. So we've got the dragon, we've got beautiful soundboard in the Flemish style, because this is actually a Flemish style instrument, mm -hmm. painted soundboard. We're gonna let people tune into your concert to actually uh, hear it. Hear it's so cool it, to yeah. hear all these different instruments back to back in one you know, hour long concert. I know that was also <laughs> a tremendous amount of work for you <laughs> to, get, to get five of these very kind of delicate instruments all up and running. Well, it's true because, you know, each one is its own thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a piano, a Viennese style piano from around 1800. Mozart would have been very familiar with this kind of piano. And um, it has little hammers that strike the strings and they're double, it's double strung for the most part and meaning two strings for each note, three in the treble, that's a lot of tuning. And yeah. the harp support also has uh, three sets of strings for each note, and that's a lot of tuning. So, you know, it's constant. Yeah. Not only in the tuning, but regulation with um, changes in temperature and humidity, mm -hmm. they tend to go out of tune, out of regulation, they don't play evenly. So. I'm always in there fixing something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we form our relationship. And when both of us are in really good shape, uh, instrument playing well and me feeling good and not too strung out from all the, the repairs and, and upkeep, then it's a good day. Yeah. So it was a good day. We had doing five instruments was a bit of a wild crazy that was a lot I'm not it was sure very ambitious if i would ever do that again because they also <laughs> each play differently i mean you need a different approach to the keyboard on each one 
yep. and um, different touch and they're slightly different key sizes and um, both in the width between the keys and the length of the key in the instrument itself. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of real personal contact. Yeah, that is one of the main differences between what you do and playing these historical instruments and what I do as a modern pianist is I have piano technicians who take care of my instruments for me. <laughs> right, um, yeah. And I, I have tried to learn as much as I can, and I, I do like to get my hands dirty and you know assist when I can, but it's nothing like the level of work that you need to do uh, yourself. So yeah, I think, I think you may have a more, um, a more intimate relationship with your instruments than, um, than most modern pianists do. Yeah, definitely. Well, here you can see, I, I played both of these instruments. This is the clavichord. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And um, it opens up. It's very small and very quiet. Um, that's a, built after an 18th century clavichord, which is actually, I believe, in the Edinburgh collection of musical instruments mm -hmm. um, by a German maker, Uber, French name, German, German maker. And this harpsichord is like mm. the other one, Flemish. Mm. Uh, it has a bit more brighter soundboard painting, but the outside and inside of the case is very plain and just kind of classical. Mm. One color inside, one color outside, the blue or the green and, and red is a very mm -hmm. traditional combination with gold banding. You saved the biggest one for last. This is the one that is definitely not going anywhere, right? This is no, this is not a portable organ. <laughs> it's a solid oak case and it has altogether five ranks of pipes, two manuals or keyboards, as you see, and the pedal board. Mm. Um, made in Germany in 1970. And it appeared at my doorstep on Christmas Eve. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, a bit delayed, but the organ builder came with it and he had been waiting around for two weeks for this instrument to arrive by air freight, but it got stuck somewhere in London oh, docks and uh, we had to go searching for it. Found it and it came and he put it all together. So on Christmas day, it was playing. Yeah, and it still plays wonderfully. The only electric part of this is the blower, right. which appears over here on the right and that keeps the air moving. Since I don't have a, a young child to keep the bellows moving and the air blowing in. Is that how they did it back then? I was just going to ask That's you. how they did it back then. Yeah. What do you think Bach did with all those kids? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Hi, the off to the organ. We need some bumpers. Yeah, thank goodness for electricity. <laughs> yeah.